What's up? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio, and today I'm gonna show you how to produce a song like this. Baby, let me fall for a minute. What's up everybody, Austin here, and we are back with another video. And for the video today, I wanted to go over how to produce a pop song. So I'm gonna take a session, show you how I add every individual element, every layer, how we process some things. And by the end of this video, you should have a better understanding of what the starting point of a song is, how to make different choices in terms of choosing the right sounds or choosing the right tools and techniques. And by the end of the video, you should have a pretty good understanding of what goes into a pop production and pop arrangement, and you'll be able to kind of hear the final product. If you do like the song that we use today, it is out right now you can go check it out it's by Riley it's called it feels like I'm dying it features West period and if you check the link in the description it'll take you to the deluxe album where I got to produce a few of the tracks so if you want to listen to the song you definitely can go check that out go show Riley some love and then other than that we do have a super important announcement and that is that today April 1st we are launching our spring sale so from right now until next week April 8th next Friday everything in the store is gonna be 25% off that includes sample packs preset packs courses Anything that has a price on it is going to be 25% off. And to kind of usher in that spring sale, if you want to head over to our website, we will be having a pack of free serum presets that's available from now April 1st until next Friday, April 8th. It's only going to last during the sale. Once the sale is over, that free pack of presets is going to come down and it'll be gone forever. So if you want to support the sale, definitely go cop something and save yourself some money with 25% off. If not, at least head over to the site and grab those freebies before they're gone. Other than that, thanks for listening to those couple announcements. Let's actually hop into the session so I can show you what's going on in this track. All right, we're in the session, and what I want to do is kind of talk about the methodology of producing a song. So I feel like it's only appropriate that we kind of start with the conversation that you should be having with an artist when you're creating a song, specifically for an artist or you've been hired out to make something. So Riley hired me out to make this song. It was, I think, maybe the second or third song we had done together. So we kind of knew workflow. And I asked him what he wanted for this one. He wants something mid-tempo, so we're gonna go with like 110. He wants a nice little bit of bounce between like the kick, the snare, and the bass. And then I know that he wants to go for like kind of 80s inspired synths, add some guitar on top of that, but keep everything feeling really modern and fresh. So we're gonna be focusing a lot on choosing sounds that are kind of 80s inspired, layering those up to feel a little bit more modern, getting some drum sounds that are super modern and we kind of make a little bit disheveled, and then just finding a really good balance of keeping it simple, but keeping it full. So we can go ahead and we can start. We're at 110. I know that he likes to write in kind of like A major, B major, anywhere around that area. So we'll probably write in A major. And then the first thing that I like to do is figure out the chord progression. So I'm going to pull up an 80 style E piano and we can start laying stuff down. I've pulled up Keyscape. Keyscape tends to give me the best piano sounds and key sounds. And they have this really, really good 80 style piano called the E piano one. And I love the way it sounds. We've just got some very, very simple triads with some octaves underneath. Here's what that sounds like. And it wasn't quantized. I like that natural feeling of me just playing it. And here's what it sounds like. Super simple. And I know that with Riley, he likes to have simpler chord progressions and melodies so he can kind of do more with that top line. So I'm gonna keep that there for now. I like that sound as kind of the initial basis for what we're gonna do with the keys, but I think that we need to layer it to kind of give it more of that modern feeling. So I'm gonna add in some layers and then show you how I'm kind of picking sounds and layering those up. All right, so this main key sound is gonna be four layers that kind of work together as one. So we have that first layer that I just showed you. The second layer is gonna be this DX7 preset, the Rode Saw. And as you can see, we do have some super VHS on here with that magic button. It's gonna give us that nice, big, lush, wide 80s chorus sound. We've got a little bit of heat and uh, it's got a little bit of noise in it, which I kind of like. So that's gonna be the second sound. You just heard it in solo. Here's what it sounds like with that first key sound. So the first key has a really good basis. It's got a nice little bit of attack with that kind of bell that you get from an e-piano, but I felt like it needed some body and I felt like it needed some width. And so that's why I have this second layer coming in. Typically when I'm layering synth or when I'm choosing sounds, it's really to kind of enhance the sound that I feel like is the right choice and then just give it a little bit of extra texture, extra width, extra depth. So that second layer is doing exactly that. And then we have a high pad. I wanted something that's a little bit higher in the scale. So we've got this little pad that's pretty soft. And 
it'll add some width and it'll add some extra texture since it's an octave or two higher. This is just a preset that we have called So Soft out of Spectrum. Um, again, if you want to check out any of our presets or anything like that, you can head over to our website. Everything is 25% off right now. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's a pretty simple preset. We've got a kind of slow attack. We've got like this kind of off kilter sine wave right here. And we've got this kind of like pulse width modulated square wave. And then it's just super filtered. So there's some effect stuff happening, but it's nothing insane. Just giving us a nice little bit of top end sustain. And then the last thing that we have is this pad. This is a super cool preset. It's from The Wave and it's called Ethereal Angels. Ash made this preset and it's crazy. I love this one and I use it all the time. It's got like this noise that moves. And it just gives us this like weird arpeggiated texture on top of everything. And all of the synths together come out to make this big, fat, wide 80 sound that just feels a little bit more current with like that sparkly last synth that we added. So now that we have all of those, I think it's time to lay down some drums and get the main groove working. So I'm gonna pull up the kick and the snare and kind of show you what's going on. Now I've got a kick and a snare. I've got a little bit of movement in this kick to kind of give us some groove with those just really sustained chords. And for the actual sounds, it's nothing crazy. It's just some splice sounds on this. It's an Oliver kick. And then we layered that up with this kind of like stomp. And then we've got a couple snares. We've got this tonal snare. Here's what it sounds like with no processing. That kind of like really weird, like cup sounding 80 snare. And I just added some EQ. I kind of filtered it out, added a bit of reverb, kind of gated it out. And then added a little delay to give us some like back end movement. And then I've got this roomy snare. Way too aggressive. So I filtered that out and then put some reverb on it. And for the kick and the snare pattern, I just played something that felt kind of organic, like a drummer would play it. Paired with those keys, it gives us a nice little bit of bounce. And it's really cool because we're kind of emphasizing that, you know, third chord coming in right before the one. So it kind of gives us something that doesn't feel super, super generic. So now that we have keys and we have drums, the next thing we need is some kind of lead line. We haven't used guitar yet. And I know that Riley wants to use guitar. So what we're going to do is show you this guitar layer that I have. It's double tracked, panned out, and then processed just with like the archetype Quarry Wong. It's on the 80s clean setting and I just changed it around a little bit. So here's what that sounds like. Double tracked, panned out. And that layered up with everything gives us like this nice cool little bit of extra movement. And then something you'll see me do on this channel a lot is use a guitar as a drone. So I am just using the guitar tool rack and there's this preset on here called Padosphere. Really cool, adds like this insane movement, kind of adds a shimmer delay, filtered that out and it gives us this cool little bit of sustain. So here's what that guitar sounds like just playing some notes on um, like an eighth note, add that preset. As just another little bit of top end pad. And then now we need to add some kind of bass because we have kind of the main leading melodic elements. So for the bass in the verse, what I'm gonna do is just kind of play these big sustained notes. And this is just using a preset called Atlantis from the wave. This kind of gives us like that big, wide, almost like resounding bass. And it works really well for this 80 style because it's wide and it takes up a lot of space, but it's not super aggressive. We got a little bit of R bass on there, just kind of boosting some of that low end, kind of shifting it around to an area that feels a little bit better on speakers. But I mean, we've talked about that before. And then we have this brass bass that we've layered up and this is using the future trap preset from again that same pack that pack is crazy for like all of these 80 sounds ash taylor that did it did an amazing job with it and it sounds like this
So we're taking away a little bit of that low end so it doesn't build up, adding a little bit of top end, and that's gonna give us that like big 80s kind of brassy bass texture. And that kind of becomes the basis for most of this song. So since we have the basis for the song, it's time to start figuring out how we're gonna make the different parts of the verse feel different. So typically what I do is I'll start building up as the verse kind of continues. So I've just picked a couple different drum fills that we have to kind of like tie in different sections. So here's one that we have. And it's really cool, it just comes in on the last bar before this all repeats. Very subtle, you probably wouldn't even realize that it's in there. We have one more that happens like through the middle of this uh, second half of the verse. Had to have the cowbell in there for that 80s vibe. And then we layer up the snaps on that second half as well with that snare, just to kind of give us a little bit of extra like texture. That's something that I really like doing is for the second half of the verse, start layering in some extra percussion elements, even if they're not adding any extra movement just for extra texture. And then for the movement, we just have a live hi-hat loop right here. And that's the only thing that we change for percussion. Only one thing changes in the sense, and that's this little filtered pluck right here, adding like a, a little bit of movement on the eighth note and it's just the uh, preset called Ghost. And we're kind of using it as it's just a simple soft plug. And that's got a lot of processing going on with like some distortion and it's got this really gnarly gritty texture, but layered up with everything, it sounds nice. And that's pretty much the entire verse. And to be honest, it's gonna be the second verse as well. I'll show you a couple changes when we get there, but let's go ahead and let's build up these drums for what's gonna be the chorus. As you can see right here, we've stopped everything a bar early, so we'll have a little dropout. And it'll come in there on bar 17. So I'm gonna go ahead and build up these drums and show you how they change from that verse. Now we are in it for this chorus. As you can see, we build up these drums a ton. So I'll go ahead and I'll walk you through. The actual pattern doesn't really change, maybe an extra kick here and there. But other than that, we still have that stomp, we still have that tonal snare, and we still have that roomy snare and that snap. Um, the main thing that changes is we change the kick in the hook to be a little bit more aggressive. So. It's just processed a little bit differently so we can get a little bit extra beef. And then I also layered up this like top end kick. Just for some clickiness, it's something that I like doing a lot and I've put some Camel Crusher and some reverb on there to kind of give it that like almost gated 80 sound. So with all of that, we have it sounding a little bit something like this. And we needed a much bigger snare. So we have this 80 snare right here. That's your quintessential, big, roomy, kind of gated 80 snare. Added quite a bit of reverb, boosted some of that kind of low end thwack. We've got this extra hi-hat loop that kind of gives us some movement. We got a little bongo loop in here that's giving us a nice little bit of like 80s, kind of disco-y, funky. very like Apache. We've got this uh, stutter loop in here that sounds really cool. We got a little perk loop. And for that loop, I really do like the kind of top end uh, texture and kind of transient that has. And then just a big crash and we pull in a little disco loop in the second half. So with all of that, we have this really, really, really big drum arrangement now that feels much bigger than the verse. And it's a lot happening, but since most of it's playing on the 16th note, it doesn't feel really messy and overwhelming. It kind of just all works together. And so that is like one of my biggest things for making a chorus feel huge, is just layer up some extra different loops, texture elements, um, layers that can kind of make that drum feel like a completely different vibe than this verse, because this 
Feels really cool for the verse, but it is not gonna work for this chorus. We just have too much to do. Now that we built up the drums, let's talk about how we build up these synths. So we're gonna use every element that we've already used. So all of these have already been talked about. Main keys, second keys, high pad, sparkly pad, filtered plucks, but we have this in here that's gonna add a little bit of extra movement. It's the Lava Strings preset from the Jupiter 8, and I have just added in some EQ to make it much brighter and much thinner. And then I've added a Trance Gate from Kilo Hearts in that Slate Bundle that I talk about that is just giving it that extra bit of like, it's giving it that gated sound. And to me, it helped the synth really sit in with those hi-hats and that extra percussion movement, because now we have a synth element that is also moving on the 16th note. So something, again, if you feel like your synths are not quite sitting in with your drums, try to add a little bit of rhythm in your synths, or try to add a little bit of sustain in your drums and kind of meet them in the middle. It can be a really cool way to kind of marry what each individual thing does. Then we have some brass right here. This is a big one. This is kind of the main sound for this chorus, to be honest. And it is the Jupiter Brass 1 preset from Omnisphere. giving it some reverb, giving it a ton of brightness, and it sounds huge. Now with the drums. Now let's get the guitar in there. We're gonna have the same guitars from the verse, but we're gonna layer up a couple more things, of course. Let's talk about what we're adding to the guitar to make that chorus feel even bigger. We've got the first three elements that we had from the verse, that's no big deal, but we're adding these guitar strums that are just giving this nice little bit of sustain. Double tracked, panned right and left, again using that Quarry Wong. Oh no, this one's actually using guitar rig, so excuse me. We've got the Girls Clean Tone. I've given this tone away before. If you go to our How to Make Pop Tones, where I talk about 1975, it'll be in there. That's for guitar rig, so you can go download that for free. Then we have a lead right here. This is using a preset that I've given away called I Wish You Would. Kind of this like crunchy tone. We've got some super VHS for the chorus. We have some repeater just for some extra movement. We've got some reverb and some EQ. And that kind of sounds like this. Nothing too crazy, just gives us a nice little bit of extra melodic movement. And then for the second half, when we add those bongo hits that we talked about earlier, I felt like it needed another melodic element. So we added these like 1975 slappy guitars. I love doing stuff like that. I've done that a ton. And that's just using that same guitar tone that we had from the strummed guitar. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and throw the bass in and then the chorus is pretty much done after that. We have the bass and the chorus. The first thing that I wanna show you is that we are changing this. This is not just a big sustained kind of like Reese bass. We have this big and clicky preset from Trillion and it's just this nice kind of like 80s style. It's giving us a little bit of extra movement. We've layered that up with the brass bass that we had earlier. And as you can see that that big and clicky preset, it has a ton of low end, but it has that really nice top end to kind of help that cut. And then I added this in, this is kind of just like a cool find. Um, sometimes I'll just search for different like arps and stuff like that. And I found this one hungry to groove. And I didn't know if I was gonna keep it, but we ended up keeping it. And to me, I don't know, it was just one of those things that like, when you find a weird patch and it works, it works. Here's what that chorus sounds like now total. I'm going to pull up the final structure of the song and show you how we structured this arrangement and then I'll kind of show you what the vocals do and then that kind of covers it. But this is really all of the elements that go into the song. Now it's just picking and choosing. Now here we are with the final structure. I'll kind of show you the intro. I'll show you the turnaround. I'll show you the changes to the second verse and then we'll pop the vocals on it. So here's the intro that we did. I just printed all of those synths that we had.
And I just have that being automated in with some different parameters in RC20, just to give us like this nice little bit of sweep. And then we have some like radio static stuff going on over here. And then that really just sweeps up into the song. That's pretty much it. Other than that, after this chorus, we added a little bit of a turnaround going into the second verse. Let me mute these vocals. And the way that we did that is I just have a EQ right here on the synth bus. And we're just pulling a cutoff filter down as we kind of play through those three key sounds. And then I've just printed one of those pads and reversed it. So it's really nothing super, super crazy. Just exactly what you would expect. Then we're pulling it back into pretty much exactly what we have in the first verse. We're just adding that percussion loop a little bit earlier. And other than that, everything else is the same. We do have some starts and stops over here that kind of coincide with what Wes is saying. So we have a couple that you can kind of see right here. Doing little things like that can kind of help. It'll make a little bit more sense once I pop all these vocals in. And then other than that, we have, you know, the kind of usual rises, hits, we got a big clap impact just to kind of emphasize different measures and different bars and different elements as they come in. So we've talked about rises and you know impacts a ton on this channel. I'm not gonna take up a, a ton of time with that. Let's go ahead and last, I wanna finish this off by kind of looking at the vocals and kind of showing you what they did melodically. So the song starts with basically just a reverse vocal into Riley's lead. Really simple vocal arrangement. It's just one single vocal throughout the verses and then basically one vocal with a couple of harmonies on different phrases for the choruses. So here we go. Here's what the main vocal sounds like. I guess I've never been the same since she left. I think about all of the pain that she felt. We're just doing those big delay throws on the end of words. You've heard me do this a lot. Basically, I just duplicate the main chain, add some saturation, add some delay, put it on 100% wet, and blend that into taste. The main vocal, I really didn't do much mixing. He kind of mixes everything as he sends it. So here's what it sounded like with nothing on it. I guess I've never been the same since she left. So mainly it's just getting that all tuned up, taking out some of that low end, kind of DSing it a little bit. I guess I've never been the same since she left. Adding a little bit more compression and then we're just sending it to all of our sins. We've done a whole video on vocal sins. So if you want, you can go check that out. I'm not gonna cover it in this. So that's all right there. And then typically what Riley will do is he'll kind of send me this. So he'll have like a low chopped and screwed and then a high. And he likes to kind of put them on auto pan. I've never done it myself, but it works really cool in this. So I said, screw it. He sent it like that. I liked it. I kept it. I don't tend to, if an artist sends stems with something that they really like, I'm not going to go back in and recreate it just for the sake of doing it. So I trust him. I trusted his judgment and it worked out in the end. And then in the chorus, we have where it jumps out. You'll see right here that we have the, the lead line. Baby, let me fall for me. I will let you... So it's just one big, super roomy kind of lead vocal, very similar to the verse. Baby, let me fall for a minute. Then we've got those delay throws. He does a falsetto vocal that kind of helps thicken that up. While a minute. And then we have like an O right here that's kind of on the back end. And if you're wondering what that sparkle is, I put a shimmer reverb on this. It was really cool. A shimmer reverb is basically a reverb that turns it up an octave as it decays. And it, it kind of made the vocals almost feel like a synth. And it just filled out the track really nice. We have the same thing for a second O. Just on certain phrases, and then we've got some ad libs. For the ad libs, I process them with a uh, doubler just to kind of spread them out. And I mean, that's really it. Then we just have the low harmony that comes in for this post chorus. Find our way around heaven to the ground. You don't let me drown. 
but it's a really simple vocal arrangement. There's hardly any harmonies happening. There's not any stacks on that lead. It's just about getting a nice lead up the middle, processing that with some width and some stereo plugins, and it just gives us a nice cool vocal. Feels really nice. Baby, let me fall for a minute. And then Riley doesn't take the second verse. We have a feature from West period. Um, the chorus, the second time is basically the same exact thing. And for Wes's vocal, I know he sent this kind of pre-processed as well. Had a lot of top end when he pre-processed it. So I just ended up smoothing a lot of that out with Sooth 2 and some DSing. And here's what that sounds like in solo. Uh, high in our hair, used to be bust high in up there. I didn't really bust till I faced my fears. And he actually printed his delay and reverb, so I kept his and didn't use my own sends. Again, if you send your delay and your reverbs as the engineer, unless I really think that they're just not working, I'll kind of use them as is. So here's what that sounds like with some of those um, like filter ins and pull outs and stuff like that. We kind of made Wes's verse a little bit fun with how we have that interact with the production. Uh, high in our hair, used to be bust high in up lair. I didn't really bust till I faced my fears. Uh, 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 let me make me clear. <laughs> I don't really feel my pairs. You can ride shiny, I'ma stare my gear. This is a big body and it's still my year. And, and I'll go to where we kind of have some of those pullouts that I was talking about just to kind of show you why they're there. Oh, nah, I'm high right now. Oh, I can die right now. Oh, I'm feeling fine right now. I know you got the past, but you mind right now. I mean, that's pretty much it. We have um, like an, in an inhale and a lighter when he talks about being high. And then we have like a gun cock. Just to kind of play around with cool foley that kind of fits the lyrical theme. And then again, that just kind of builds. We take everything out and then have a really big chorus. And that's literally the entire song. As you can see, it's one of the simpler arrangements that we talk about. Super big drum arrangement in the chorus. Really only a couple things happening with the keys. It's just all about the layers. A couple guitar elements, some huge bass, and then a vocal that sits really nice. So if you want to hear the song in full, go check that out. It's on Spotify. You can go listen to it, as well as a couple other songs that I did for the deluxe. But that is pretty much everything that goes into me producing a pop song for an artist. And there you have it. That is how I produce a pop song from start to finish, kind of the methodology of how I get into a song, choosing those first initial sounds, layering things as we build, structuring that arrangement, and then wrapping it up with a vocal and with a little bit of mixing. So hopefully this video helped you out. Again, if you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Helps out the channel a ton. And then if you want to support the channel, head over to makepopmusic.com, especially this week where you can save 25% off until next Friday, April 8th. And then also feel free to go grab that pack of free CRM presets, because again, they're only going to be there this week and once they're gone they are gone but that's going to do it for this video if you have any questions let us know in the comments down below i hope you all enjoyed this one and we will be back next week with more content much love everyone peace